I want to welcome a very special guest, Dr. Ruth Bush. Dr. Bush is the Associate Dean in Educational Affairs at the John Seeley School of Medicine, University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, Texas. She's also the Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Vascular Surgery, Venous and Lymphatic Disorders, and the President-Elect for the American Venus Forum. Dr. Bush, welcome. Thank you so much, and thank you for this opportunity to share uh, the future of the Journal of Vascular Surgery, Venus and Lymphatics. I have been uh, very fortunate to uh, take this over from Peter Glavitsky and Peter Lawrence, who have really propelled the Journal of uh, Vascular Surgery, Venus and Lymphatics into the premier global journal for venous disease and lymphatic disorders. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Hingarani. So oh, you're mentioning that there's some changes taking place. Um, what is open access? So open access is a different type of publishing model than a traditional subscription-based publishing model. In subscription-based publishing models, uh, people pay a subscription fee, and those who have paid the fee are allowed to have access to the journal articles. In open access, uh, or, or journal in open access models of publishing, uh, the authors pay a publishing fee. So there is no subscription fee to anyone who wants to access the articles. They are open uh, for anyone who has a, an internet connection. So how does this affect the readers, the authors, and the reviewers? So for the readers off and off, well, for let's three different, three different areas for the readers. Uh, this means that you have online immediate access to cutting edge research. Um, it is freely available to the public. Uh, there's no paywall that you have to go through. There's no subscription fee. New science, cutting edge science, what is happening around the globe that is published in JVS VNL is available to you as the reader without having to go through a library, a friend, or pay a fee online to get that one article. Uh, for the reviewers, I don't think that there is any change. I think the reviewers are still there to review and accept uh, excellent science, to look at articles critically, give recommendations based on their expertise or area of knowledge, um, improve the manuscripts, and then make them available to the public. For the authors, however, um, there are some advantages and disadvantages. So for you as an author, there is increased accessibility of your article. Um, you because there's no paywall, your article, as soon as it is accepted and published, is available for anyone around the globe who has access to the internet. They can read, they can download your article, they can cite your article. Um, and so this is great for persons and uh, who may either not be associated with a institution that has a library or they have a limited library or uh, they're in a country where they honestly do not have the resources uh, to have subscriptions. So for in lieu of having an expensive subscription for the reader, you have access to any articles. So for you as the author, you also have faster dissemination. You do not have to wait for a publication timeline. You don't have to wait for your article to be put in the queue to then be uh, allocated to a certain uh, subscription. Uh, so you can share your findings with the scientific community, with the public more rapidly, uh, thus disseminating your uh, scientific um, knowledge, your expertise, uh, and accelerating the pace which with that knowledge uh, is available. So um, and, what type of discounts are available for the authors to make these payments? So there are, uh, that's a very good question because the, uh, all, uh, the publication fees are one of the major barriers. And I will say that um, in the past, a lot of open access journals 
uh, were known as predatory journals. They did not have a good reputation. They asked for money up front. Um, I think the Journal of Vascular Surgery, Venus and Lymphatics has established its reputation as a leader in dissemination of venous and lymphatic research. Uh, so I think that that's, that's a non-issue. Uh, the quality concerns that are there with some open access uh, journals having uh, lower editorial standards doesn't exist. So for the publication fees, that can be a financial burden uh, for persons who, or researchers who do not have access to funding. Uh, we do have some waivers and some fee offsets that we can provide. So what I would recommend to folks, if this is a burden for you and you are concerned, then you should reach out to myself or my senior managing editor, Carly Green, to ask about some of these uh, offsets. They may not apply to everyone. Uh, Elsevier also has a program called Research for Life for uh, countries that may have uh, be ranked by the World Bank as lower middle resource income countries, they will have offsets or full waivers that they can provide to persons who are publishing from those countries. However, if you're not from one of those countries and you do have uh, funding issues, then I would recommend that you reach out to myself or to the senior managing editor Again, we do have some funds that we can provide. They may not completely uh, cover the full cost of the article uh, publishing fee, but they can be a tremendous uh, offset to that cost. So for invited articles, how does this new open access affect people who are invited to write an article for, for, for one particular reason or another? So I think for folks that are invited to write an article, whether it's for a virtual special issue or um, some other article, number one, we will ask about uh, their funding. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Neil? Funding possibilities. So for example, people who are publishing research that is funded by a governmental agency uh, more often than not, part of their grant funding is fees for open access. Some persons uh, are with institutions that will only allow them to publish in open access uh, journals. So number one, we need to have that discussion. If this is a an either industry sponsored or professional medical organization sponsored paper, such as guidelines, uh, some white papers, then we will ask the organization to help offset or fully cover the article publishing costs. Oftentimes, if those uh, criteria, any of those criteria are not met, we can offer waivers or some type of funding support for those articles. There will be some that have full waivers. So what's the timeline for these changes for the JVSVNL to be undergoing open access transformation? So for the JVSVL, this will be fully open access as of January, 2024. This being said, the first journal that will be published in January, 2024, all articles will be open access within that journal. So that includes articles that we are reviewing and accepting right now because there is uh, about a two to three month lag time between the time something is admitted. So articles that were submitted uh, in the latter half of August might be subject to an article publishing fee. Uh, some that were already in the queue and going through the review process may not. So I anticipate uh, having some of these discussions with authors uh, who submitted uh, after the deadline in August, uh, who will be then published in a fully open access journal in January of 2024. Our last uh, non-open access journal, uh, the articles have already been uh, chosen for that journal and it will be published in November of 2023. 
Dr. Bush, thank you very much for clarifying these points. It really helps the readers, the authors, um, and, and the reviewers just to help clarify these changes that are taking place. So thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity, and I appreciate the interest in the Journal of Vascular Surgery, Venus and Lymphatics. Our goal is to promote visibility and impact of our uh, author science. I think open access will help contribute to this, and I think it will also promote mo more inclusivity uh, as we are able to reach out to uh, persons from different uh, countries and other institutions to be able to publish their work. Thank you.